The acquisition of DeMar DeRozan has officially been announced by the Sacramento Kings. And so now we can start talking about what the Kings next steps are this offseason to really push them into that next tier of team into the title contention tier of team because you add DeMar DeRozan and it definitely makes you better. It's going to make this team a lot better, I think. But no, it doesn't make you title contenders. But the beautiful part of this acquisition is that he was a free agent. It was a sign-in trade. You didn't have to give up much. You gave up Harrison Barnes, Chris Duarte, two second-round picks, and a 2031 pick swap. That still leaves you with a couple first-round picks to trade. It still leaves you with Kevin Herter's contract to trade and a few other players' contracts to trade to go out and make another move. You know, I think DeMar's fit on this team is a good one, but he doesn't address all of the problems that the Kings have. And let's be honest, it was always going to be tough to get one player that just addressed every problem the Kings have, but he does address pretty much all of the Kings' offensive problems that they had. And when you think about the other things the Kings could have done other than going and getting DeMar DeRozan, they could have traded for Brandon Ingram, right? They could have used their first round picks, used the, the Barnes and Herter contracts to trade for Brandon Ingram, and that would have left them in a tough spot. And really, it would have left them in a tough spot for a couple of reasons. One is the contract. I mean, DeMar DeRozan is just getting paid less than Brandon Ingram would command. Brandon Ingram is going to want a max extension. When you look at DeMar's contract, it's 24, 25, 26 million over three years with that third year partially guaranteed for 10 million. And so that allows you flexibility to go out and make other moves. And then, like I said, you have the assets to go out and make other moves. Because if you brought in Brandon Ingram, he also solves the offensive problems for the Kings. And he also doesn't solve the defensive problems. But in that scenario, you would be a lot more restricted for the other moves you could make. And the same could be said for a guy like Markinen or Kuzma, who maybe solved the defensive issues a little better, but still not entirely. And so that's what I think makes this move so great is... It's a low cost, pretty low risk move. You're getting a durable guy in DeMar DeRozan, knock on wood, and a guy that I think just so easily slides into Harrison Barnes' spot. So let's look at, with the Kings roster, the way it is right now, if they weren't to make any other moves, you just look at the way DeMar replaces Harrison Barnes in the offense. The Kings, a lot of times last season, when they would kind of go stagnant offensively when the three-point shot wasn't dropping. It was throw the ball into Harrison Barnes in the post or throw the ball into DeMontis Sabonis, both which aren't super efficient. And so you're replacing that Harrison Barnes inefficient post-up with a DeMar DeRozan post-up, which is a lot more efficient. The amount of times Harrison Barnes would just get the ball either on the wing or in the mid post, wherever he got the ball, and he would face up and he would almost fall over doing his jab steps. Seriously, that was one of the weirdest things about Harrison Barnes last season. He looked so off balance. And he would just hold the ball forever and usually not make anything happen. There were like a few games where he just kept going off in the post. And two of them happened to be against the Warriors. And so you're replacing that with DeMar DeRozan, who's going to be way more efficient when you give him the ball in those scenarios. And who is a very good passer as well. And people are worried about the spacing. But, you know, I talked about it a little right after um, DeMar signed with the Kings is that I'm really not worried about this spacing because Fox has been a lot better from three and is good off the catch. You have Keegan Murray. You have other guys like Malik Monk, Keon Ellis, who can knock down threes, Trey Lyles. And then also you can't really sag off of either Sabonis or DeMar. You can sag a little more off of Sabonis, but if Sabonis has the ball, you're sagging off him up top. He's just going to dribble straight to the wing where Keegan Murray is standing. He's going to hand the ball off. He's going to screen, and Keegan Murray's going to get an open three. And in DeMar's case, if you're sagging off, then he's either going to take the three, which he can make, or he's going to dribble into the mid-range and take a shot if you're not closing hard enough. Or if you're closing too hard, he's going to go by you and make a play either at the rim 
or find another player as he attracts the defense. You know, I think the spacing issues are completely overblown, and especially when you're going to be able to stagger these guys. And that's one of the beauties of getting DeMar DeRozan and how great of a playmaker he is. The Kings now have four guys that are really good playmakers and can make things happen in De'Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, DeMar DeRozan, and DeMontis Sabonis. So you can have two of them at least all on the floor at once or at any given time. And so that's going to help a lot because the Kings were good offensively when you would have Fox, Monk, and Sabonis all out there together. But when it would be, you know, just De'Aaron out there trying to run it, just Sabonis, or even sometimes just Sabonis and Monk, like it didn't always go super well. And so that's going to be one of the beauties of this fit. And there was a, a great video made by Hoop Venue on YouTube that pretty much put into like words, video and stats, all of the things that I was thinking in terms of the fit both offensively and defensively. When it comes to that defensive fit, DeMar is not going to improve the Kings in any way, but I think he can do exactly what Harrison Barnes was doing out there. He's not going to be a great one-on-one -on -one defender, just like Barnes wasn't, but he is more athletic than Barnes, so hopefully some of the off-ball defense is a little bit better. And I think positionally, with where the Kings roster is right now, I think he can play kind of the four defensively. But that's really where the Kings need to look in their next steps for this offseason. They need that size. They need that athleticism on the wings. And what the Kings have been doing so far this offseason is really getting rid of players that would get played off the floor or were really one-dimensional. And so you look at Davion Mitchell, a pretty one-dimensional player in terms of being a defensive player. Uh, Sasha Vizenkov, one-dimensional as an offensive player. Harrison Barnes, one-dimensional as an offensive player, got played off the floor in the playoffs. Kevin Herter is still on the roster, but he's another one of those guys that's pretty one-dimensional. And so I think the Kings are just trying to get more versatile. And if you're not a versatile player, then you better be like a DeMar DeRozan level offensive player or a great, great defensive player, which the Kings don't really have. I mean, I guess you could argue like Alex Len is kind of that at the backup center. Like Barnes and Herter, they got benched in the playoffs two seasons ago against the Warriors. That's like 35 million in salary per year that just got benched. And so you're bringing in DeMar DeRozan who, like I said, is like 24 to 26 million in salary, and he's not going to get benched. And you look at the other guys on the Kings roster that are replacing them, and they're just trying to be more versatile. And something Monty McNair said about Devin Carter, who we just drafted, who unfortunately is going to miss some of the season, it sounds like. He just had, or he's going to have surgery on his shoulder. But he said there was a lot of Derek Whites out there. And so he compared in the playoffs, so he compared Devin Carter to Derek White. And that's what the Kings are trying to build. They're trying to get more versatile players, players that can play both sides of the court, which you have in Fox, you have in Keegan Murray. Uh, Sabonis is good enough defensively. Keon Ellis, I think, is good both ways. You know, not everyone is going to be great on both ends, but you just have to be good enough on one end and then provide a lot on the other. There aren't a lot of really good free agents that are out there at this point. And honestly, there never really were. There weren't that many guys that the Kings could look into getting. And, I mean, they got one of the best ones in DeMar DeRozan that was possible. You know, I think Paul George would be the other guy, but they were never getting Paul George. And so they're going to have to look for trades to get better. And I think, like I said, they want to get someone who's versatile, who is a good defender, and who has size. There's some talk, I know some people, they kind of are obsessed with this, like, move Sabonis to the four, get a five that can play alongside him. And, you know, that'd be great if you could find a five that shoots threes and blocks shots and is athletic. You know, that would be great, but it's just not realistic. Sabonis is completely fine playing the five. I have no problem with that. What the Kings need to find is a really good two-way wing. And so it has been rumored that the Kings are still interested in marketing, still don't see that happening, and they're still interested in Kuzma, and, and so that could happen. And so what I like about those two guys in terms of the archetype of player that we'd be looking at 
is the size that they both bring the size, the strength, or the length. Markkanen would be a great fit on both ends because he's a solid defender and he's really long, but then he's also a really good catch and shoot guy and he doesn't need the ball in his hands. You look at a guy like Kyle Kuzma, maybe needs the ball in his hands a little bit more. And so that's kind of where it'd be a little worrying. It's like he'd really have to buy into the role of being more of like the Aaron Gordon type for this team. And, you know, I think he kind of did that with the Lakers when they won the championship in the bubble. But it's like, does he want to do it again? It really doesn't sound like he does because he re-signed with the Wizards. He didn't want to get traded to Dallas. Like, it, it just sounds to me like he doesn't really want to buy into that role. And so that's why I don't think he'll be the guy. And so another guy that I've talked about a lot is Cam Johnson. And I think he is more of the type of player that the Kings should be looking at. More of the 3 and D type player. Look, he's not hes not the best player that the Kings could go out and get. He is a little kind of like Harrison Barnes in a way. But I think what he would really do is give the Kings the size they, that they need. Because I think if you have Fox and Sabonis as your 1 and 5, getting 3 guys with size in between those 2 guys is really important. And so having DeMar who can play like the two and then Keegan Murray and another versatile kind of three, four type of player, I think could make the Kings a really good defensive team because the Kings can be a solid defensive team, even with the roster that they just have right now. And so I think if you find a guy that can be a catch and shoot guy and play his role offensively, doesn't need to be a guy that does a lot with the ball in his hands or anything like that but then can also defend. I do think that that can take the Kings to the next level because you would still have Malik Monk off the bench. You would have Keon Ellis off the bench. You would have Trey Lyles and Alex Len. And so that still leaves the wing depth a little weak, but no matter what happens, it's going to be kind of tough to fill wing depth when I think you're kind of starting with only one good like defensive wing so it's it's going to be tough no matter what because you would have to bring in like two guys but then having Keegan Murray alongside another good wing defender and then you can stagger those minutes as well depending on matchups would help the Kings a lot and you know we saw something towards the end of the season where the Kings started putting Demonis Sabonis on the bigger wings they started putting him on Giannis they tried him a little bit on Zion, who killed the Kings when Harrison Barnes was guarding him. And so you also look at like the Paolos and the LeBrons. I think Sabonis has done a good job of defending those guys. But then that just leaves you exposed if they have a, a center, just any center that can do anything with his size inside. Sabonis cannot be two places at once defensively. And so that's why the Kings so desperately need a bigger wing. I don't think there is a perfect fit out there that the Kings can reasonably get because I think the perfect fit is Markkanen. I don't think Kyle Kuzma is a perfect fit. You know, I think just thinking about that lineup, uh, a lineup of Fox, DeRozan, Keegan Murray, Kyle Kuzma, Demonis Sabonis, like it just feels like we threw a bunch of random players together, but I it could work. And then Cam Johnson, like he's not... He's not my favorite, but I do think he would help this team a lot. Another guy that's been talked about a lot is Isaiah Stewart. And so he's a guy that can play the four, can play the five, can stretch the floor. He's a dog. He's aggressive in every way. He will go and try to beat up LeBron James. We know this. In terms of free agency, the only guys that are really out there their wings or like Isaac Okoro who doesn't really have the size that I would be looking for on the Kings he could still help but it doesn't really have that size he'll probably just go back to Cleveland if I were to guess and then you have Sadiq Bey who just is one of those three and D guys who doesn't shoot the three well and doesn't defend well you know he's the three and D guy that doesn't do either well and so could the Kings take a chance on him Maybe, but I don't think the Kings are going to go out and get a free agent that takes up a lot of money. I think they're going to fill out the roster with minimum guys. They're going to keep the MLE available because you can trade into it. 
and I really do think the Kings have another trade coming. Could that trade come during the season before the trade deadline? That's definitely a possibility. And I think with where the team is at now, I kind of talked about before, like what if the Kings don't make a move uh, this summer? They would just have to kind of tread water until they can make a move before the trade deadline. Well, adding DeMar DeRozan makes treading water in the Western Conference a lot easier. But it will be interesting to see who else the Kings bring in because they brought in Jordan McLaughlin and, you know, who knows how many guys the Kings are going to bring into training camp and which guys are really going to be competing for the roster spots. But McLaughlin's a good guy to get because Devin Carter's going to be out. And I think he's also a good guy to get because you never know who the Kings are going to have to include in a trade. You know, if they want to go out and get a big name, another big name, then they might have to part with a guy like Keon Ellis, who is on an amazing contract and has been looking really good. And so he has a lot of value. And so if you want to fill the holes on your roster, you might have to give a guy like that up. And so I do like the addition of Jordan McLaughlin in that sense. With the way the Kings front office works, I wouldn't be surprised if the 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 player that the Kings trade for just kind of comes out of nowhere and is a guy that no one was really thinking about. But I just think the Kings have put themselves in a really good spot to be able to make another move and be able to make a move that can put them over the top and actually contend in the West. You know, I don't think there's going to be any move that the Kings realistically are going to make that's going to make them just undoubtedly the number one team in the West. But you just got to get uh, you just got to get into that top tier and then hope the team meshes well because you know at this point it's on it's on Mike Brown and the coaching staff and the players to figure this out. You know, I think uh, the roster is looking good and I think the the possibility of it fitting together well is there but we just won't know until they start playing. So anyways, that is it for this episode of The Rural Report, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.